What's up guys, in this video we're going to be creating rebirths for our tycoon in Roblox Studio. Let's get right into that. The first thing we're going to want to go ahead and do is go right over here to this button, the Game Pass button, because we're going to be duplicating this and pretty much just moving it over. The reason why we're using the Game Pass button is simply because it doesn't have the script inside of it like all the other ones do. So I'm just going to duplicate this with Control and D, and then we can move it over somewhere to about the middle of our base or so. We want the player to be able to see it, but not have it next to anything simply because it's going to be the rebirthing button. Now let's go ahead and rename this over to rebirth button, just like that. We can get rid of the game pass ID value inside of this button right here. So now what we need to go ahead and do is insert a int value, just like that. And we're going to rename this one to price, just like all of our other buttons. But then we're also going to insert a bool value. And we're going to rename this one over to rebirth. And you can go ahead and just check this over to true. Next, feel free to change the color of your part over here. I'm going to make mine a nice cyan color. And I'm going to change up the billboard GUI game pass right here. I'm going to change the text color over to a nice cyan. After that, I'm simply just going to change up the text from it. So instead of saying Game Pass 50 Robux, we are going to say Rebirth. And then whatever price you want the Rebirth to be, I'm personally just going to set to like $5 for this. And then we just set the price over to that same $5. But here's where we need to actually create the object for our Rebirth. So now we're going to go ahead and create the object for our Rebirth button here. All I'm gonna do for this is insert a part into our tycoon, move it around, change the transparency up to one so that we can't see it. I'm gonna turn off can collide and then turn on anchored so that it doesn't move around. And then you can simply press control and G with this part to group it into a model. After that, we just name it to our rebirth part. And then we can go ahead and drag this right into our purchased items folder, just like that. Now inside of our rebirth button, we just change our object to that rebirth part. And then you can change the dependency to whatever it is that you want to be the last item in your tycoon. So now we have our button taken care of. We can close off all of these extra folders right here and let's open up our core script. Inside of this core script, we need to scroll right down here to our button functions, right about here. Now, right where it says if marketplace service user owns Game Pass Async, we just want to go right down below here actually, right inside of here. You want to say else if V, which is our button, find first child, parentheses, quotation marks, rebirth, because that is our rebirth value that we have right here inside of our button. So if we find that rebirth value inside of the button that the player is buying and V find first child parentheses quotation marks and then we say rebirth value then what we're going to go ahead and do is say if player find first child parentheses quotation marks once again leader stats dot cash dot value is greater than or equal to v dot price dot value then so we're checking if the player has enough cash then we're going to play our sound we're going to call our play sound function i mean to say this is going to take our v and then our audio dot button sound dot sound id then we're going to take away the player's cash. So we're going to say player.leaderstats.cash.value minus equals our v.price.value. So now we're going to say our objects table right here. We're going to put these square brackets and we're going to say v.object.value. This is going to find our buttons object inside of our objects table that we made a while ago earlier in the series. And we're going to change the parent of that actual object to our type equals to our tycoon dot purchases. So that will get the parent of the actual object inside of our button and change that over to our purchases folder. 
then we simply say tycoon.parent. And we simply say v colon destroy. So what this is doing is that if the button has the rebirth value inside of it when the player steps on it, we're going to check if they have enough cash to actually pay for it. If they do, then we're going to go through all of our normal routine for the button itself, but we're going to be adding something a little later that will help it. And what I mean by that is that we need to go into our tycoons folder right up here, and we can duplicate this bindable event, and let's just name it to rebirth tycoon. Now let's go back to our core script right here, and right above where it says v destroy, we want to say tycoon.parent. We're going to say find first child parentheses quotation marks and this is going to be our rebirth tycoon bindable event and we're going to tell it to fire and this is just going to take the player. We X off the core script right here. Let's go ahead and add a brand new script inside of our tycoons folder. Just add in a normal script like this, and then let's rename this over to rebirth. So we're gonna say script.parent.rebirthtycoon.event, and then we're going to connect parentheses, a function, more parentheses at the end here, and this is going to take that player parameter that we were passing through earlier. And then we press enter, drop a line. So now what we're going to say is local tycoon equals to our player bind first child parentheses quotation marks and then tycoon owned. So that is the tycoon owned value that we put inside of our leader stats or rather inside of our player I mean to say earlier on and we say dot value we're going to say local clone will be equal to game dot server storage find first child parentheses quotation marks well, not quotation marks but just our tycoon dot name so this is going to look for our tycoon's name inside of server storage and at the end here we simply just say clone and that will get a clone of our tycoon. After that, we go through our pretty similar process that we did inside of our save data script. We say clone.parent will be equal to tycoon.parent. We also say clone.values.ownerValue dot value will be equal to tycoon dot values dot owner value dot value and then we say player dot tycoon owned dot value will be equal to clone instead of the tycoon and then we say our clone day dot main items dot owner door dot title dot surface gui dot text label dot text will be equal to tycoon dot main items and we can pretty much just copy this line right here instead of copying all that again just like that and then we simply say tycoon destroy just like this now before we actually go any further there's another thing that we have to do inside of our leader stat script so if you go over to server script service open that up you should see your leader stat script let's go ahead and open that up now right below our cache value that we made right here we want to drop down a few lines and say local rebirth will be equal to instance dot new int value comma leader stats that will create a new integer value and then parent it to the leader stats. We say rebirth.name will be equal to quotation marks rebirths. And then we say rebirth.value will be equal to zero, just like that. And this will create a new rebirth value for our player here. Next, we go back to our rebirth script and we say player.leaderStats.rebirths.value plus equals one, just like that. Instead of saying player dot leader stats, we say player find first child parentheses leader stats with quotation marks. And this is our rebirth code here. 
click on your rebirth button right here and let's go ahead and duplicate it and I'm going to move it over to the materializer right here. Now all I'm going to change the name of this to is materializer rebirth button just like that and you can set the dependency to whatever you want to again. The object though this is going to be materializer and the price we are going to rename this to rebirth price just like that. And then we can go ahead and get rid of this rebirth boolean value inside of it. And you can feel free to change the text inside the text label of your part. Once again, I'm just going to change the name of this from rebirth over to materializer. Materializer one rebirth. That, the, that way the player knows that this is just one rebirth. Anyways, after that, we can close off all these buttons here and let's open up our core script one more time. Now, once again, inside of here, we need to go all the way down to where our button stuff is. And right below this little rebirth function that we made right here, we just want to add another else if statement. We want to say else if v find first child parentheses quotation marks rebirth price and v find first child parentheses quotation marks rebirth price dot value then we're going to check if player colon find first child parentheses quotation marks leader stats dot rebirths dot value is greater than or equal to our v dot rebirth price dot value then we can go ahead and copy these things right up here just like that and paste them down inside of here but instead of saying player dot leader stats dot cash dot value you're going to say player dot leader stats dot rebirth dot value minus equals to v dot rebirth price dot value after that we say the same v destroy just like that and that will go ahead and destroy our button afterward now outside of the script if we just go inside of our button here and change rebirth price down to something like one instead of five so only cost the player one rebirth that will be much better now of course if we were to play this the rebirthing would work however we need to go ahead and start up our data store once again for all of these rebirths so what you need to do is open up your save data script right here so inside of our save data script just simply come right down here to beneath our spawn function right here where we dealt with the cache for the player and down here we're going to do that same spawn function method just like this to create a new function right here then we're going to do a brand new p call as well we're going to say local success comma error will be equal to p call parentheses function and then more parentheses just like this so now we're going to go ahead and say our data store set async and it's going to be our player dot user id dot dot quotation marks and then we're going to say dot rebirths and we're going to do comma and this is where we actually type in our player dot leader stats dot rebirths dot value and this is going to save the player's rebirths to the actual data store through this first end right here we want to say if not success then all we're going to do is warn our error that we got right there and that's all we have to do to actually save the rebirths to the player however down here we need to actually load those rebirths right back in so first off right underneath our local cache data we want to say local rebirth data as well next right underneath this spawn function we're pretty much going to say the same spawn function right here just like that and then we're going to create a brand new p call once again so we're going to say local success comma error will be equal to p call parentheses function more parentheses we're going to say our rebirth data will be equal to data store this time get async instead of set async and this is going to be our tycoon owner dot user id 
dot dot and then our dash rebirths just like that and then once again we're going to say if not success then we're going to warn our error however if success and rebirth data then we're going to say tycoon owner dot leader stats dot rebirths dot value will be equal to our rebirth data so this is everything that needs to be done for our rebirths i believe the only thing left to do now is just to simply delete our old tycoon that we have in server storage and then duplicate this tycoon and move it right back into server storage just like that let's go ahead and click on play to see if it works however before we do that one thing you need to keep in mind is just reset your data store real quick. How you do that is simply just change the name of it from what it was before to a simply new name. I am sorry, I accidentally made a mistake right here. The L inside of text label was not capitalized. However, now it is capitalized. So that was a slight issue on my bad. Let's go ahead and click on play once again. Let's go ahead and claim our tycoon. So since we don't have any data, since we just reset our tycoon data, we can actually go ahead and just buy all of our things again. I'm going to just buy the game pass button and wait for some cash to start coming in. Now that we have this, we can go over and buy all of our buttons. Once again, I recommend putting the dependency for the last rebirth button to the actual last item that the player is going to buy. And you'll see that we can actually buy this materializer button simply because it uses rebirths and not cash. So let's go ahead and buy the rebirth button. And as you can see, everything resets and we only have one rebirth now. However, let's go ahead and start buying stuff once again. And let's buy our brand new materializer right here that costs a rebirth. As you can see, that costs my rebirth. Perfect. And as you can see, join in again. If I want to claim my tycoon, you can see everything that I have just bought is still here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video just as much as I did, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. I'll see you in the next video.